YouTube. My name is Mesa Sean, and we are back here on Anthem. Okay, folks, in this video, we're going to go over my top tips and tricks that will help you out in Anthem. At the time of recording this video, the VIP demo will be over, so this is going to pertain more towards the open demo that's going to hit February 1st, and also the full game. Most of the gameplay that you're going to see will be courtesy of EA Game Changers. They brought me out to San Francisco to get some hands-on time with Anthem, and also record a whole bunch of endgame and high-level activities. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber, because I will have some endgame content for you shortly. Let's get into today's video. Before we get into my tips on combat, you want to master the controls. And I know that's pretty self-explanatory, but when it comes to flying, when it comes to hovering, dodging, all of these are going to be critical to mastering when you get into combat. Dodging comes in so handy because many times when an enemy has its sights on you, you can actually hear a sound. And if you hear that, you can dodge left or right to get out of the sights. Hovering can be good or bad. A lot of times you'll be hovering and you'll just be taking damage from everywhere. However, hovering comes in very handy if you have enemies that are not shooting you, a la the spiders. When they're on the ground, you could simply just hover over them and start dropping your abilities and also shooting them. Before you go into an activity, whether it's a stronghold, free play, or even a story mission, you want to do an in-depth gear check. Obviously, you want to take a look at your gear score in the top right-hand corner, and you would like to equip the gear that has the higher rarity. However, really take a look and see, well, what does that piece of loot going to give you as a benefit for whatever activity you're doing? For example, looking at the support seal on the storm here, I've got a rare quickening field. Now, what happens is when I put that up, Anyone that's standing in there will get a constant recharge of their abilities really quickly. However, you will still take damage because the enemies can shoot right through it. Now, if I had the wind wall in a higher rarity and higher power, I might choose to use that because it probably would come in handy for a few things. One, picking up a down teammate, but then also if you get yourself in a bad situation, put that wind wall up and it will block some incoming projectiles. The same thing will apply to your components. So I've got a few rare components right here. One is for general ammo and the other one is for extra sniper rifle ammo. However, I would like to keep myself alive, so I go with an armor reinforcement and also a shield reinforcement. But again, this is all depending on your play style and what your goals are going into a particular mission. If you have stuff that you absolutely will not need or at a lower rarity, just scrap it because you will need those materials to craft things. When it comes to weapons, this is pretty subjective. I myself like to run an assault rifle and a high impact charging sniper. The charging sniper that's available in the VIP demo is called the Devastator. The charging sniper is so vital, I think, because of the fact that one, it does so much damage, Two, it has explosive rounds. And three, when you see an enemy from far away, especially those pesky turrets, you could take them out really quickly, especially the turrets. They are so annoying and will kill you really quickly from far away. So you can lay into them and they will go down really quickly, maybe two to three shots, depending on if they're primed or not. Let's talk about some basic combat tips. Now, in the game, you have a few different elements, four to be precise. You have fire, ice, acid, and lightning. The ranger javelin is going to have access to all four of these elements, and I believe the other javelin suits have at least two to three that they can use. In a nutshell, it's all about combos, and that's how you use your abilities. So, one person might prime an enemy, and then the other person might detonate it, and that all depends on your abilities. If you look on the right-hand side of the screen, if you see one of your abilities with a little circle, Circle, that's a primer. If you see one with a little explosion symbol, that's going to be a detonator. So in this particular storm build that I have, I've got a pretty good setup. I have a primer on the left and I've got a detonator on the right. Without going too in depth, depending on the enemy and the situation, I can do a prime on an enemy, and then I can use my other ability to detonate that enemy, giving me what's called a combo. The combo is going to do more damage, and I'll cover that more when I cover the end game stuff, because that's going to be vital when you're doing your loadouts before you go into an end game activity. Continuing with the basic tips regarding combat, there's a number of things. One, 
Stay with your teammates. Don't be that guy that goes flying off when you're in the middle of a firefight with tons of ads everywhere because if you get downed, it's going to be very difficult for your teammates to come and bring you back to life. The next tip will be to use cover, use cover, and yes, use some more cover. There are so many times when you'll be out in the open and you'll be getting hit from all over the place and not even realize where it's coming from. So if you have some rocks or something that you could hide behind, use that to your advantage to reload your weapons, to regroup, to get your shield back, and so forth. My next tip for combat is going to be use your dodge as much as possible. Dodge left, dodge right, dodge while you're in the air. What I find typically that works best for me is I'll take a shot with a sniper rifle and then while I'm doing the reload, I'll do a quick dodge to get out of harm's way. Or if I'm laying it to enemies with my assault rifle and I'm about to do my reload or want to reload, I'll do a quick dodge back into cover so I can get that reload and not take any fire. You will also hear an audio cue when an enemy is about to shoot you or snipe you. As soon as you hear that, dodge out of the way and do not give them the shot. You also want to keep an eye on your ammo, and I'll explain more when I talk about the end game content when that embargo lifts, because you will run out of ammo rather quickly depending on what activity you use. So just be real careful, uh, pace your ammo, especially if you're using a sniper rifle. All enemies will have critical spots where you do more damage and you will see yellow damage numbers. Like those lethal turrets, if you shoot them from behind, they have a crit spot all the way in the back behind the turret. So if you want to take out a turret really quickly, you need to actually fly up behind the turret and hope that you don't get shot on the way up to it. So I would just snipe those from far away. These big boys right here with the shield on their back, they have two canisters that if you hit it, you will get some crit numbers. Also on their right arm, they've got another canister there. If you hit that, you will get some crit numbers. In other strongholds and missions that I cannot show you just yet, we were running into situations where there might be three or four of them. So what we would do is we would have two people on one side grabbing aggro of them, and then the other two people would come from behind, do some priming and detonating, and then shooting that crit spot. And we would just keep confusing them over and over because they would go back and forth between looking at the two people in the front and two people in the back. Let's talk about crafting. Before you start an expedition, you can craft up to three things that you could use in three different slots before you start an expedition, depending on what level you are. These are for single use only, and you can see here I have one equipped, and it says for a single expedition, increase the recharge speed of equipped gear by 10% of the base speed. However, make sure you toggle over to your crafting tab, and then take a look at the different bonuses. Uh, here we have shield inscription. For a single expedition, increase the maximum shield strength by 10% of base strength and shield regeneration by 10% base regeneration. Now I can craft it and then I can equip it, but I'm at a low level right now so I can only hold one. These are going to be vital as you progress in the game and start to get to the end game content. You're really going to put some thought into your gear selection, but then also what consumables do you want to craft and if you have the materials, of course, to craft them before a single expedition. To craft materials for the consumables or weapons, which we'll talk about in a second, the best place to get all of those will be in free play. And that's either just out and about in the wild picking them up, or also when you complete world events. When the chest will open up for a world event completion, you will get a whole bunch of materials. And also when you open up those chests, they will have different rarities in terms of your materials. Back at Fort Tarsus, to the left of the forge, you have the vault. Now here, if you scroll over to crafting, you can get a gauge for all the different types of materials that are out there. You've got some masterwork ember, you've got rare ember, you've got uncommon ember. You have weapon parts, and then you also have specific javelin type of materials, some for the ranger, some for the storm, some for the colossus, and some for the interceptor. I've been only playing on the storm and the ranger so far, so I have nothing for the colossus or the interceptor. To craft items for your javelin, you need to have blueprints, and those blueprints come from a variety of sources. A lot of them come from the different challenges within the game. Once you have a blueprint that you like, you can craft it depending on how many materials you have and you can actually scroll left and right and choose the rarity do you want epic do you want common do you want uncommon i more than likely would recommend saving all of this stuff until you get higher up in the game and then if you find a blueprint of a particular weapon or component that you really like 
then I would craft it into the highest rarity you can get it as. That is going to do it for this video, guys. If you found it helpful, a like rating will be much appreciated. The open demo is going to be here on February 1st. And also, I have another embargo lifting where I get to show you some high-end endgame activities. Leave me a hashtag made it to the end if you did make it to the end. And do me a favor, drop a like in this video only if you see fit. Follow me on Twitter at MesaShawn. Check out my stream, usually and always on YouTube. And that's it. I am out of here like Vladimir.